Hello, I'm Atsuba George and I welcome you to this new week. Now, we've been talking about the glory of Jesus and I'm believing God that this week is going to take us to different dimensions and explaining further what the glory of Jesus is or how we manifest the glory of Jesus. Trust me, it's going to be a great week because I believe God in my heart. He's going to do great things in your life. God loves you and he's about to demonstrate it in different ways. Before we go on to this broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me. Say, Father, I receive now my daily bread from you. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Expect a miracle of provision of every kind in your life today. If it is health you need, receive it right now. If it's financial supply you need, receive it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever grace you need to make today a good day for you receive it today is not going to be a bad day for you praise god no it won't it cannot be you know why god has already planned it good for you praise god the raw materials of the day may not look good but it's in your place to take every challenge and and beauty that's going to come today and convert it to something good and meaningful in your life praise god you know our text is actually from John chapter 17 and verse 22 where Jesus testified and says the glory that you have given me I have given them praise God that they may be one but then I want to show you something I began I touched on this on I think on Friday yeah uh, Acts chapter 10 Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. I want to show you something in trying to describe the character of the glory of God. There are lots of misconceptions in the body of Christ among God's children when they want to walk in the glory. Oh, I want to walk in the glory or what they begin to imagine in their mind the glory is. I'm trusting God this week. That's, those are the things we're going to be looking at and to help you praise god that's the whole purpose of the broadcast is to help you help you understand god better help you live a better life praise god thank you jesus so acts chapter 10 and verse 38 take note of this peter speaking in the house of cornelius and then he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him take note of this it says god anointed jesus with two things the holy ghost and with power now a lot of times people have thought these things to be the same i mean if you have the holy ghost then you have power hey there is the anointing of the holy ghost and then there is the anointing of power. Incidentally, most people will desire the anointing of power more than the anointing of the Holy Ghost. True. I mean in action now, see? So now, the Holy Ghost is there. And then there is the anointing of power. When people approach the Holy Ghost, most times, all they are thinking about is power. You remember Jesus told the disciples also, he says, look, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, right? And you shall be witnesses unto me. Take note of what Jesus said. You shall be witnesses unto me. Okay, so the Holy Ghost and the power of God, they seem to go together. But then, these are separate anointings. I pray you understand what I'm about to share with you. These are separate anointings, okay? So, 
most times believers think demonstrating power when i say demonstrating power in the healing the sick the outward display of spiritual things see that shows that you have the holy ghost and a lot of people make mistake where that is concerned and 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 for example here the bible says jesus went about doing good and he was healing all who were oppressed of the devil and then he specifically said for god was with him take note of that god was with him that statement or that part of that scripture god was with him it's 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 easy to think oh god was doing all those mighty miracles no actually god was with him guiding him the guidance of the holy spirit even in the display of power it's so important people have walked in power without knowing who the holy spirit is yes i'm not talking about fake power i'm talking about godly power people have walked in power without knowing the holy spirit that's why i need to separate that there is the anointing of power and you can be anointed with power without knowing the holy spirit it's possible a lot of people do it they, you there are lots of people like that see now if if your desire as a child of god or as a minister is power and you go on a long fast you go on you go on some exercise some spiritual exercises and eventually you will get see he that seek it will find so you power is released on you and then now you begin to display power and you feel that is everything see now, and, and, you know i was i was discussing with someone recently and I said it, it, lots of things I, I discover about the holy spirit the things is teaching me about his personality and himself and i was discussing with someone like it's so amazing that the things we think are the good things spiritually they are far from what the mind of god is you see for example when you 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 want to be spiritual you want to walk in the spirit okay now what are you thinking about Oh, I want to pray, I want to fast so that I want to ascend. I want God to show me different things in the realms of the Spirit. Now, most of those experiences, genuine now experiences, people have had when they say, Oh, I was taken to this place, I was taken to that place, and I was taken to this place in the realm of the Spirit. Most of those experiences are experiences people have with angels, not even with the Holy Spirit see so now uh, those are experiences angels take you on now they, they are angels in charge of all those things now when you study scriptures you you will see those things john for example john had dealings with angels you know angels was taking him to different places and explaining things to him and all that now and then you have the power oh i want to step into a place and people fall under the anointing i want to be able to give word of knowledge i want to be able to give accurate prophecies about people i want to be now that's the power element that's the power element see now you can walk in these two separate things and still not please god understand it you can walk in these two separate places and still not please god or rather they are not a show or they are not a yardstick to test your spirituality a man can be healing the sick a man can walk into a place and the whole place will shake it's not a test or it's not a, a proof of his deep spirituality or even deep anointing please hear me it's not the proof of a man's anointing is this 
the presence of the Holy Spirit in his life. And how do you know the presence of the Holy Spirit is in a man's life? Very simple. How much his life is controlled by the Holy Spirit. When a man wants to walk, when a man begins to walk in power, he can be controlled by power. See, Samson, for example, was controlled by power. Elijah, for example, in scripture was controlled by power. You insult Elijah, oh, you have it hot. <laughs> He's not going to spare you. See, now that's, that's the control of power. And you remember the incident with Jesus and the sons of thunder. Jesus wanted to go to a place, I think in a place, he wanted to go to a place and the people would not receive him. And James and John were upset and like, look, why are we wasting time? Let's call down fire just like Elijah did. And Jesus looked at them and said, nah, don't try that. And Jesus said something to them. He says, you don't know what manner of spirit that you are or that you have. Elijah did it. And this Elijah that did it was so great a man of God that he didn't even die. A child had to come and take him away. And now, by that example, you would think that, I mean, this is a role model. <laughs> I mean, this is a role model we should follow. So you want to follow his example. But hey, Jesus looked at his disciples and rebuked them for thinking those thoughts. I'm like, don't try that. You don't know the kind of spirit or the manner. Actually, he said the manner, which means the character of the spirit that you are. Now, when he said that, he was referring to the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus invariably was saying the Holy Spirit will never lead you to do such a thing. To call down fire because you are angry. The Holy Spirit will never do such a thing. That's what Jesus was referring to. See, but Elijah did it. Fire came down. So that if that was wrong, why did God let the fire? Now this, there, are, there are different things you will grow up to learn about the realm of the spirit and about walking in the spirit. There are different things you, you will grow up to learn. You will grow up to learn that there are elements that you command. And the, the moment you are taught or you know how to command those things, those things come under your authority. And you can use them at will. I'm telling you the truth. You can use them at will. And then the funny part of it or the downside of it is those, that power that you think you carry might become your downfall. Yes. It can become your downfall. It, it can lead to your own destruction. See? Now that's why it's important you learn or you grow to trust the person of the Holy Spirit to be your guide. The Holy Spirit has to guide you. Now, that is what it means to be full of the Holy Spirit. He guides every action of yours. You remember the disciples when, when they had issues and people were complaining, oh, they were not being served and things like that. And then the disciples came together, the apostles came together and said, look, how do we solve this problem? And then they said to the people, okay, you know what you're going to do? He said, choose seven men that are full of the Holy Ghost. Now, think about this. I want to bring you to the way they used to reason them. He said, choose you seven men full of the Holy Ghost. Now, they were not sending them to go hold crusades. They were not sending them to go, um, to go for evangelism. They were not sending them to go for healing meetings. They were to select these seven men to serve tables. And they said, Look, they've got to be full of the Holy Spirit. Now, how do you know they are full of the Holy Spirit? What they are saying, choose seven men who you trust. The Holy Spirit guides them. Why? Because those who have submitted themselves, and that's, the, that's the being full of the Holy Ghost, submitted themselves to be guided by the Holy Spirit, they will have strong restraining ability. Because now you're going to be dealing with people who will go off. 
Okay. Now, what happens when these people go off? The guidance of the Holy Spirit in this man will help them at such time to deal with every situation they meet. See? So, to be full of the Holy Spirit is not to be going about displaying power. You have it. You can do it. But to be full of the Holy Spirit is to allow your thoughts, your actions to be vetted each time by the Holy Spirit. And in doing so, you will now begin to reflect or bring forth the character of the Holy Spirit, which is the character of God, which is the main principle of everything we do, bearing fruit. So God wants you and Jesus also wants you to bear the right kind of fruit. See, you need to bear the right kind of fruit. You don't want to do something like Elijah did. And Jesus will come later and say, don't try that. You see that now? Now there are many people who love to be ex ex um, disciples of Elijah. We live in a world that will provoke you to do a lot of those things. But there is something I want you to remember. Being tempted to respond always, that's what life will do to you. Life will always tempt you to respond. But then your response will actually show who you are. At every level in life, when you're small, when you become great, your response will always reveal your personality. And it is your personality that God deals with. It is your personality that receives reward from the Lord. So if you don't bring yourself under subjection to the Holy Spirit to guide you, if all you think about is exercising power or exercising some spiritual things, you may end up on the wrong side. You will end up not manifesting the glory. Even though men will think, ah, this man, he carries so much glory. No. No. Carrying so much glory is about being full of the Holy Spirit. And that also means being led in actions, in words, in deeds by the Holy Spirit. That's a man who's carrying so much glory. Praise God. I'm going to be talking more on this as we continue this week. But I want to pray for you. I pray the Spirit of the Lord guide you today. I pray the hand of the Lord rest upon you. I pray the Lord opens your eyes to see, hear, and understand. And that you will walk without understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.